Parkinson's is the fastest growing neurological disorder and the leading cause of neurological disability in the world. The best treatment that's available for Parkinson is 50 years old. Given all the new sensors that we have, including our phone, internet everywhere, I think it's time for a change. In the United States, 40% of the individuals who are above 65 and have Parkinson do not see a doctor. In the Arab world, there's one neurologist for 300,000 people. In 23 African countries, the average population per neurologist exceeds 6 million. So we gotta be able to do better to be able to give access to neurological care to individuals whenever they need it, whatever they need it. Imagine somebody has Parkinson they're taking the medication. In many cases, the medication they're given may not work well for everyone. And if they do, it's really important to fine tune the dosage. You only can do this as people are taking before and after medication, they're performing some of the tests, and they can share the results with the neurologist. And neurologists can decide how well they're responding to the medication, whether the symptoms are getting better, should they be getting more dosage or less. So many individuals who may have Parkinson are immobile, or scheduling an appointment with a doctor may take time. In a Parkinson, ideally you want to get those assessments almost every day. So right now, imagine if somebody has Parkinson, they can go to a website called parktest.net, turn on their webcam, and perform the same test they would do in a clinic. The website is designed in such a way that somebody who has tremor, who may not be able to use a keyboard or a mouse, should be able to navigate just by clicking the space bar. And as they do this, they have the option to share the data for research. We have collected a huge amount of data, close to 300 videos of individuals with Parkinson and their age-matched videos of individuals without Parkinson. Good thing about computers is that they can analyze subtle nuances of the facial expression, some of the behavior that's invisible to the naked eye. For example, by analyzing the expression, we notice that individuals with Parkinson have lower movement in this region. Uh, there's subtle head movement differences there as well. Like when you move your head, we move in this direction, we move in this direction, we move in that direction. Using computer vision, we can quantify all of that and be able to understand between somebody who has Parkinson, who doesn't, what are the subtle nuances. So we'll be working for the next five years looking into how we can deploy some of this technology in the real world to benefit individuals who have PD.